We're here in Beaverton City Plaza for the 2024 Policymakers Ride. Today, among the about 90 people that we have registered, we have local electeds, we have Congresswoman Bonamici here, staff from Senator Merkley's office. So we have our elected leaders, we have agency leaders, and the project implementers, and we have community leaders and advocates, and all able to ride together, have the same experience of, of both experiencing inspiring infrastructure and experiencing the difficult gaps together and hopefully building that culture of collaboration. I wish I could go on the bike ride, but unfortunately I can't join. It's really important for people like me and other policymakers at all levels to be at events like this, to just emphasize the importance of safe streets uh, and the benefits to not only our families, children and families, but to the environment from being able to walk and especially bike. I want to welcome you to the coolest city, the raddest city on the west side, Beaverton. So here we are. Thanks for taking the challenge and coming to the west side. If you're riding on a nice street, it's Beaverton. If you're riding on a rough road, it's probably Washington County. And I know, there's no Washington County electives here to defend themselves. Okay, enough with the speeches. Let's get on our bikes and ride. Yes, this is the policymakers ride. The basic idea is pretty simple. Get all the wonky elected officials, transportation advocates, planners, engineers, agency staffers, get them all together on bikes and see the infrastructure that they're all trying to build and get grants for and to plan and engineer and all that stuff. So sit back and learn from some of the folks I saw on the ride and get a sense of the bikeway network infrastructure around Beaverton. You ride out here much? The rest of my family pretty much all lives out here. So oh. when I'm out here, I ride a fair bit. I think that there's a lot in common between Beaverton and, and East Portland and East County. You know, this has been county roads that have since urbanized. So you have more more people, more, which means more cars, and uh, but the all, also the opportunity for more transit and multimodal transportation. realize how much you miss not just the camaraderie but the actual interactions that you get you know you spend so much time in our offices planning things and talking about things and looking at PowerPoint presentations and all that kind of thing and then it's so much better to just actually get out there with your peers and other folks you've heard about but have never even met and you get on a bike and you actually ride through the infrastructure that we're all so committed to building it's great to be out here so, so one of the reasons that we, we invite folks out on rides like this is we really want you to see the depth and breadth of what the opportunities are for people who want to do active transportation and what they experience every day. We, we came along some industrial areas. Um, the big campus that we passed on your right side as we were coming up is the Nike World Headquarters. When we turned off of the bike path on that four lane busy street, that was Jenkins Road, we were actually on the west side trail when we got onto that widened asphalt area. And the idea there is that the original route for the west side trail was kind of a pencil line on a map. It turned out was it wasn't really practical to send it through the middle of the Nike campus for various reasons. And so it was decided to move it off to the side, which provided a visible and yet off street opportunity for folks who wanted to move, but maybe not move in a bike lane on a busy street. thought when I started biking this route was it shouldn't be this hard. It is terrifying, it's loud, it is frightening, and I've had drivers almost hit me in a number of places that we'll talk about today. The only off-street crossing that's near here is about three miles away, so this path that we're going to talk about today is important. Students that live on the north side of 26 that are only a mile or two away from their school that might be able to ride a bike to school, but I'm sure that none of them currently do because 
the, of this crossing is so terrifying, there's not a parent in the world that would let their kid do it. This could be a potential safe route to school, but it's not. What, what do you experience when you're over here that's different than if you're just riding, let's say, in central Portland? Yeah, so Washington County, unfortunately, is very car-centric. I would say that the drivers are not as friendly. It's, it's definitely a different attitude when you're trying to cross an intersection or um, cross through a, a marked crosswalk. Often people don't stop for you, a lot of close passes, um, but it's also an infrastructure problem. If we don't build safer infrastructure with true curb-protected facilities, um, of course, you're going to have more uh, negative interactions between people on bikes and people in cars. So we need to redirect some of that money. And the money's there, we're just spending it on cars. We've got a few boards up here that we're hoping you all can come up and take a look at, show you what the bridge might look like for the West Side Trail. The West Side Trail primarily follows the power line corridor. It's Bonneville Power Administration. And the trail will keep within the corridor. It's gonna cross Highway 26 uh, and it ends at Cornell. It is a 12 foot wide regional trail paved. We're looking at 28 to 35 million. And the intent is to take this all the way through permitting by 2027. Kevin Dieter, Beaverton City Councilor. Hello. What should folks know about biking in Beaverton these days? We got a lot of good stuff going on. We've got uh, updating of some of our plans and design rules based off of our complete streets policy. In general, when you're biking out here, there are a lot, a lot of good routes, uh, neighborhood streets, greenways, uh, that can keep you off some of the busier roads. Uh, the paths over on the yeah, west side, no, similar to like how we do neighborhood greenways over in Portland, right, mm -hmm. where it gets people off the busier streets. Is that kind of how you all see them over here? Somewhat. I wouldn't say that they are as abundant enough to, to be the place for everybody's consistent daily ride and commute. Mm -hmm. But they are a critical piece that can help, especially get people north and south mm -hmm. across the city and through some regional connections. But a lot of it will be some neighborhood roads or neighborhood trail connections that can help complete those gaps but sometimes you need a little help to know where those are so going on rides with ride with side or pedal palooza rides out here on the west side can really help out This is where memories are made. You really get to experience the other side. You get the beautiful trail over here, and then you get the, the challenging gap. You know, there's a signalized crossing here, and then there's a narrow sidewalk, and it takes a little navigation. One wonderful thing is our partners at Washington County have recently agreed to help us with some on-street um, pavement markings and signs to help people navigate the gap here. 